Welcome to another video in our minimalist series. I am now going to ask Steve some questions about his minimalist journey. So Steve, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about what minimalism means to you? To me, minimalism isn't a number. It's a mindset of eliminating things in your life that are distracting and don't add value despite the fact that they monetarily may be worth a lot of value. And it's evaluating what brings value to my life and joy to my life and what doesn't. And being honest with yourself and having the courage to eliminate the things that distract you from the things you really care about. So what got you started on your minimalist journey? For me, it started with backpacking. We used to go car camping a ton and I bought this huge rooftop tent that weighed a little over 100 pounds and it was so cool. It goes on the back of your truck or on the roof and it flips out and it's got a pad built in and it was so cool to camp in. But I just, after I bought it, I was excited when I purchased it and then I set it up, I took it camping maybe 30 times and I realized for the price that this cost, I could buy a full backpacking ultralight outfit, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, tent that would be a better built tent to help withstand rain and the elements better and smaller and lighter. And that thought really appealed to me. My friend Davey introduced me to ultralight backpacking and we've shed our packs weights from 40, 35, 40 pounds down to 8 to 15 depending on how many nights we're going and that really changed my mindset. We read a book by Mike Cleland, which we'll put in the description below, which everyone should read if you backpack even a little bit. And that book completely changed my mindset, where you go through your whole pack and you say, do I really need two pairs of jeans for a single overnighter? Or is it okay that if it got wet and my one pair of jeans got wet, would I survive and be okay wearing my shorts down? I think so. So the very last page of that book was a page about not just removing unnecessary things from your pack, but removing unnecessary things for your life so you can go farther and do more things that do bring you joy. And that, for me, was a tipping point. I learned, you know, to, to leave unnecessary things out, things that I used to think I needed, but to realize I don't need that things and I'm lighter and freer and happier without them. So once you got started on minimalism, what's the progression been like in your story? So it's been hard for me to go minimalist because I'm addicted to my possessions. They don't rule me, but I do a lot of research and I study out the best thing for my need and I enjoy quality, well-made things and a lot of the things I purchased, it, it, you know, when I was in high school, I wanted a stereo, I wanted a car of my own, I wanted a TV, and but I couldn't have it. and so. I felt like there was this gap of where I wanted to be and what I had and as I went through college and early married life I could finally make enough money where I could get all that stuff. And then once I had all that stuff, there was the gap just kept moving as I acquired more things and it was well now I want two cars and now I want a newer one and now I want a bigger stereo and now I want a better mountain bike and and I was able to get a job where I could afford it pretty much anything I wanted within reason and I got it and I finally feel like in the last year I've kind of neutralized and said I've got the really nice stuff that I want and I'm happy and I am and and those things made me happy because I used them they were tools for me to enjoy life but I realize it went a little too far and as I've as as you've helped me be more minimalist in my life I've eliminated things that brought value but took the place of something else that I value more. We once had a financial class that said the best way to start out by financial planning is to set goals in your life. What are your four most important things in life? And we each listed our four most important things and they said rank them in order of importance and don't let anything else get in the way of those four things. And although these items and objects brought value to my life they replace the time and energy that something of more value, like spending time with you or being in the outdoors or making friendships, it, re it was replacing those. And even though it was a value thing, 
it wasn't as good as the things that were replacing it. So I love the excitement of clicking buy now on Amazon and getting it two days later. That's exciting and that's fun. And that still hasn't been fully purged from my system and that's going to be hard for me. But just as much and probably more, I like letting go of things because it proves to me that that possession didn't own me. And it's, it's almost, it's, I'm going to say it's more freeing to let something go or give it away or release it than it was to acquire it in the first place. And it sounds crazy and I wouldn't have believed myself a year ago if I'd met myself. But it really, it's freeing. And when you let go of this stuff, it feels like taking an extra pair of jeans out of your pack and saying, why have I been carrying this around my whole life? I feel so much freer now. So what's still ahead for you in your minimalist journey? Where do you need to go with this? What are your goals? I still have too much stuff and I'm really good at convincing myself that there's a need for something that I want. And, and realistically that need may not be there. Right now I'm addicted to camera gear and there's some exciting new cameras coming out. I'm trying to justify having the, a professional camera to do YouTube videos and frankly I don't need a professional camera. I want one and I convince myself it's a way to make money on the road but I need to learn to dial that back and realize that you know people were making great movies with cameras 10 years ago that are nowhere near the cameras today and so I still need to teach myself to stop buying things and stop looking for reasons to justify the wants and instead look for the needs and justify those so to me minimalism is different than being a penny pincher to me, if I see something I need, I'll go out and buy the best one that suits my needs. I don't need to buy it from a thrift store, though I may if that's the right way to do it, but it's not about living the cheapest life possible. It's about using the tools that I really need that are quality and eliminating the ones that I don't. Also, I still have a lot of possessions I need to get rid of. I'm doing a great job, but it takes time for me. As much as I want to be on the road tomorrow, I've had to put things into a box and shelf it for a month and then come back and a month later I'll open it up and say, why on earth did I hang on to this? Why did I think I, this would be a value to me? And I know I need to go through it a few more times, but each time I'll cut my possessions down in half. And I've probably cut 80 to 90% of my possessions, which is a big deal for me because a lot of them are tools and things that bring value to my life and being able to repair things is important to me and and you know it's been hard to let some tools go know that I could probably use that in five years but I don't need it now and I could buy it again at that time and so I'm going to let it go and it's felt good. So what are some strategies that have been helpful to you and maybe some tips that you have for other people as they try to start this journey? Uh, there are a few things. First off, we felt living in our house, living a backpacking lifestyle where we backpacked almost every weekend, then coming home to a 3,200 square foot house on a third of an acre with nothing but lawn that we never used and only watered and wasted water. Just doing that long enough, you feel the stark contrast of being in nature where your yard is infinite and then going home where you're paying to water something you're not using, wasting resources. Naturally, you do that long enough, you're going to become a minimalist. And you're going to say, this is crazy. Why am I doing this? Why do I live in a house with four bedrooms when I'm happy in a 10 square foot tent? You know, I'm just as happy. I'm probably happier in the tent. And when everything you need to survive for a week, you can carry on your back. It seems silly to have a basement jammed full of stuff. And so that really helped me. And when we moved, one of the most helpful things was moving it all into a storage unit. I know a lot of people recommend not to do that. I've got a buddy, Kyle, who stored his stuff for a year. And at the end of the year, he said, if I'd just given all my stuff away and not paid for the storage unit, I could have bought all my stuff again twice based on the fees it was. And that makes perfect sense. But for us, a storage unit was essential. So we moved all our stuff into a 40 foot by 10 foot storage unit. All our possessions except our cars. That was huge being able to do that because we had to get rid of stuff to fit in there. Mm -hmm. And then revisiting the storage unit every couple weeks, you go through and you look at it just like the box and you say, why have I been hanging on to this? 
And one thing that's been hard for me is it's been hard to see every all my possessions. I see dollar tags affixed to them because I had to work hard, often two to three t jobs at a time, to afford that luxury. And I remember what it cost. And letting it go has been hard because it's like I paid a hundred dollars for that. I'm going to try and sell it for forty dollars on the classifieds. But now I'm at the point where I'm like, forget the forty dollars. It is even more rewarding to just be free of it. And so we've donated a ton of stuff. So the storage unit helped a ton. Another thing that helped a ton was wanting to live in an RV full time. The desire to do that so bad trumps any desire to have lots of stuff. And so that motivation for me is huge. So whether you're moving into a tiny house or trying to get out of debt or trying to live a different life, that motivation and that goal drives you to do hard things. And, and getting rid of stuff is hard when you've when you've spent your whole life accumulating stuff, you flip a 180 and learn to give it away, it's hard and that motivation will get you through it. And the last thing that's helped have been your tips. Um, Teresa's tips have been amazing. It'll ask things like, if your house burned down, would you replace this? That sounds kind of silly, but half my stuff, I probably wouldn't have replaced it. And that made me realize, why on earth do I have it? Other questions like, um, does this add value to my life? Another question, a lot of people attach emotional sentiment to objects, like my first Pinewood Derby car. Having the car doesn't really bring value to my life. Now, if we had children, it'd probably be a different story because I'd love to show my future son one day my Pinewood Derby car and what that meant to me. But seeing that we're not going to be able to have children, I can simply take a picture of it. And that memory can stay with me forever. And the picture takes a few megabytes. And with the digital age and the ability to digitize so many things, it, we've never been in a better chance to get rid of our things. Okay. So what advice do you have for other people who are maybe starting or considering starting their own minimalist journey? Um, my advice is not to compare yourself to other people and that you don't have to be a minimalist in life. I'm not better than anyone else because I'm a minimalist. My life is better for me because I am now. And if I could go back in time and tell my old self five years ago to be a minimalist, I would have said, get out of here, you're crazy, I'm getting what I want, I don't want to listen to you. Minimalism isn't for everybody, and it's not a requirement to be happy in life, and we're not superior because we're doing it. But if you do want to pursue minimalism, just take some small steps. Um, it's not about a number. It's not about how many possessions you have. It's not about dollar signs or anything. It's about learning how to make... It's, my goal would be, my idea would be set goals in life. What are the four most important things to you? Or ask someone, if you won the lottery tomorrow, how would your life be different? And realize that our possessions can get in the way of that. And if they don't get in the way of that for you, awesome. Maybe minimalism isn't for you. But if you do find that, you know, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I'd sell my house and move to France. What's keeping you from selling your house and moving to France right now? You could do it. If that really was your most important goal, don't let your lower goals get in the way of your loftier goals. So how has your life changed so far as a result of adopting a more minimalist lifestyle? Um, my life has changed more than I thought it would. I have more time to do the things that I want to do. I didn't realize the link between possessions and time. At one point in my life, one summer, I had a whole bunch of hobbies. I love hobbies and I love learning new things. I was playing disc golf, I was hiking, I was mountain biking, I was dirt biking, I was backpacking, and jeeping, and camping, and I didn't have time to do all these things, and my summer was just full, 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 and it was a fun summer, but all of these hobbies, all of these things took time, and once I realized, okay, my top priorities are being with my family, spending time outdoors, and focusing on you know religion and things that are important to me I was able to remove other things that 
we're replacing those that were fun and good but not as good and we're replacing those so it's been freeing as well I still I'm still not done with the excitement of purchasing things and I'd like to be at that point but I'm not there yet but I now before purchasing something think where am I gonna put that either in my house or in an RV does is it going to add value to my life or is it just stuff and it's a lot easier to talk myself out of purchases now and and stay stay where I'm at without bringing on more and more stuff and so understanding the link between possessions and time has been huge for me and I'd much rather have time I'd rather have time to do what I want more than any possession in the world so Steve what are your parting thoughts and bits of wisdom for our viewers Robert Downey Jr. said that a lot of Americans have a lot of appetite, but no taste. And when I heard that quote, it struck me because I realized in some areas of my life, I had a lot of appetite, possessions, with no taste, meaning I never tasted them. I'd get them, and then a, three days later, I'd be excited about the next purchase or the next project or the next thing coming. And so I've learned to have more Fewer things in my life that taste really good than lots of things that fill me up and don't taste good. And so, parting words, if you're finding yourself that way, unhappy despite all the things you buy, and not any closer to what you want or your goals, try minimalism out. 